Christian greetings in the name of Christ this morning. It's good to see all of you here again this morning. I hope you all had a, a wonderful week this week, one that you can look back and say, thank you, Jesus, for the, some of the experiences that you've had. <clears throat> this morning I want to talk about uh, one of our greatest enemies that we face in life. And it's a continuation of my last message that I had uh, on uh, how we view work. And apparently I made the comment in my message that uh, something about being lazy. And the scripture has a lot to say about lazy and I don't have time to go into it because I got a text. Uh, I think it was Monday. Uh, not from nobody here, but uh, somebody that listened to the message and says, uh, well, I'd like to hear what you have to say about that if that's, you know, <laughs> if that's a big subject. And uh, <clears throat> so I wasn't really planning to preach that today, but uh, as I started studying and looking, and of course, curiosity kind of kills the cat, right? So uh, and I never really looked in the depth of what the Word of God has to say about laziness and uh, as I studied into it and read more into it, and I was like, wow, wow. You know, there's, there's a, a lot of verses. Now, if you go into the Bible, you're not going to find the word in the King James Version as such, you know, as the word lazy. But you have the word uh, slothful, you have the word sluggard, and you have other scriptures such as, uh, you know, Matthew chapter 25, where Jesus talks about the talents, you know, one of bearing the talents and not working. So you have different aspects of the word of God talking about this, and I come to discover that I have a lot of homework to do. That's a big subject. In fact, it is serious business with God. And I come to discover in reading the word of God that... Uh, you can, in a nutshell, you can pretty much look at a person's life, at his everyday life, and see how he functions. And if he's lazy in his everyday life, uh, that's probably how it is spiritually as well. You can't separate the two. And so I was like, "Wow, you know, that's that's powerful. That's powerful. Uh, that we can just take everyday living, and we can just you can." Like Mike was saying at the devotion, you know, what is our fruits giving? You know, if I'm planting a tree, peach tree, is it giving peaches? If I'm planting a cherry tree, does it give cherries? Does it give grapes? What for fruits am I producing? And this is another fruit that is produced in our life without us even really trying to. Uh, because of the way we respond and uh, <clears throat> respond to it. <clears throat> Pro Proverbs is full. That's where most of the verses is. Uh, you have uh, two words used in the Old Testament here. is slothful and sluggard. And you look both of those definitions up, and the first word that it has is lazy. <laughs> so what is lazy? I think we're all familiar with that word, right? Familiar with that term. So you want to think of lazy, what does that, what does it mean to you? I'm going to open it up here just for a brief. Uh, give me some definitions here. What does it mean to be lazy? Anyone? <laughs> Maybe that is a definition in itself, right? How else are you going to explain it? If you work up, work up the word slothful or slothfulness and sluggard, this is what it means. It means laziness, sluggishness, or a person who avoids activity or exhortation. <clears throat> a lazy person is one who not only doesn't want to work, but, a one, but is one who strictly avoids work. In other words, he goes a long way around. Do whatever it takes to avoid doing a job. Purposely. 
I thought this is interesting. You know, not only does he not like to work, but he makes a conscious effort not to specifically do work that he knows he should be doing. Purposely makes that decision. That's the, that's, <laughs> that's the dictionary, given that definition, not me. <coughs> and I was like, wow. <coughs> If it gets bad enough, we deliberately go around what we know we're supposed to be doing. And so in that context, the next question I have, is it sin? What do you think? Can laziness be a sin? New thought? Anyone? Okay. Uh huh. Is a result of laziness, right? So it can become sin, that's what you're saying. It could result in sin, right? Which stems from laziness, right? So yeah, I had to work through that one too. It's like, no, come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that serious. But in studying scripture, it is sin. I mean, let's call it for what it is. It is sin. And thereby it produces sinful acts, which the acts are, like one of them you've mentioned, is not providing for my family. <clears throat> Do you enjoy being around a person that is lazy, that you can't get them to work? <laughs> Do you enjoy being around a person like that? How many of you enjoy that? No one, right? <laughs> no one. How many of you enjoy being around a person that is a step ahead of you and getting done what needs to be done? How many of you enjoy that? <laughs> Everybody, right? It's fun to be around a person like that, that is a step ahead of you and gets that work done that needs to be done. So this morning we're going to go to the book of Proverbs and look at seven indicators of a lazy person. Now this is the book of Proverbs bringing this out, not me. I know it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty brutal. It was for me anyhow. Proverbs. First one we have is Proverbs chapter 10. And I just want to take the time to read these verses. First one I have is in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 26. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard, or I'm just going to use the definition lazy, so is the sluggard or laziness to them that send him. Which brings me back to my first question. How many of you like to be around a person or work with a person that is lazy? None of us. I don't know how many of you had got smoke in your eyes. I think all of us have experienced that. It, it's painful. It's very painful. How many of you drink vinegar? <laughs> I think there might be a few that tried it. And if you didn't, go try it. If you never tasted vinegar, try it. This is what Proverbs says. This is how bad it stinks. 
to be with a person that's lazy. And if you're the person that is a lazy person, <laughs> that's how people feel about you. This is how you come across to the other person, if this is you. Now this morning, I'm in no way going to sit here and point fingers, because right here. But my heart this morning is, is that we open our heart and allow the Word of God to be that filter. Allow the Word of God to speak to your heart. <clears throat> the next one is in Proverbs chapter 13. Just a few verses, chapters over. So now the second indicator. Proverbs 13, verse 4. The soul of the sluggard or the lazy desireth and hath nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The soul of the lazy one craves and gets nothing. How many, how many times... How many times have we wanted something so bad, but we weren't willing to get it? Or could I say this? A person that is lazy has a long wish list. A person that is lazy has a long wish list because he doesn't have anything. And the reason he doesn't have anything is because he's too lazy to get up and go get it. Right? He's too lazy to get up and go get it himself. So if you have a long wish list this morning that you wish, you're wishing things, <laughs> that's at your fingertips. Get it done. Get it done. Don't look at other people. Don't get other people to do it for you. Proverbs there says that <laughs> if you're a lazy person, this is going to be one of the fruits on your tree is you're going to have a big wish list and nothing's happening. Number three. This is one verse I want you to catch. is the lack to carry through. Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 19, verse 24. And here he uses the word slothful. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom. Right? Don't take it out of his pocket. And will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. So literally, a lazy person will take a spoon and put it in a dish to eat, but he's too lazy to bring it up and feed himself. He will not feed himself. In other words, he will not care for himself. He will not take care of himself because he's too lazy. It's too much work. He doesn't follow through with what he started. Now, how many of you can literally, especially if you're hungry, go get a plate of food and sit down and not eat it? I mean, how dumb is that? I think we're having a fellowship meal this afternoon, right? So how many of us would be willing to sit down in front of everybody else, get a plate of food and set it before us and then sit there and not eat it? That's the point Proverbs, that's the point this verse is making. This is how it looks. This is how it affects other people. <clears throat> Proverbs 
Next one is lack of planning. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, I'm sorry, the other one was chapter 19, verses 24. The lack of planning, number four. He does not look out ahead. He doesn't plan for the fall. How important is it to look out ahead? I know Jesus said don't take no thought for tomorrow, right? I mean, there's a balance there. But there's also responsibility. There's also the responsibility of providing and planning ahead. Of making your moves count. But a lazy person won't even make his move don't even make his move count number 5 in proverbs chapter 22 verse 13 and i want to read this i want to read this i think this is so familiar to all of us proverbs 22 verse 13 the lazy man saith there is a lion without and i shall be slain in the streets a lazy man always has excuses for not doing what he needs to be doing. I mean, come on. That's what Proverbs said. This guy's not even going to work because there's a lion out on the street. I mean, I don't know if it is or not, but that's the excuse that he's given. How many times have I or do I give excuses for not doing something that I know I should be doing? Number six, a lazy man has a lack of sense. In Proverbs chapter 24, four, verses 30 to 34, and I'll read it here in another version. It says, I passed by the field of a sluggard or a lazy man, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense, and behold, it was all overgrown with thorns, and I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. Here's a person that just don't have a vision. He don't have no goal. He don't have no plan. <clears throat> and the seventh one is a lazy person is very proud. According to Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26. Verse 12 see it, says, Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way, and a lion in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it up again to his mouth. A sluggard is wiser in his own conceit. <laughs> Notice this, verse 16. The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men that can render a reason. It's so bad that not even seven people that are wise can come together and give him any counsel. Because he's not listening. He's not paying attention. He's not making no effort. <clears throat> a lazy person will never become everything God wants him to be. Not because God can't do it, but because they won't put an effort. How is God going to use a lazy person? How is God, God going to use me if I'm lazy? Remember? Lazy is simply the avoidance of any kind of activity or work. I don't want to lift anything up that takes work. <clears throat> so the question this morning is, am I being what God wants me to be? Can I be what God wants me to be? And maybe this is one of the areas that is a problem in my life that keeps 
God from working in my life is because I'm not willing to put any effort out. I'm lazy. <clears throat> I want you to turn to Second Thessalonians chapter 3 in the New Testament. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Starting in verse 6 through 15. Now I want to read it in a different version here. Uh, instead of reading it twice. So you can follow along the King James Version. But when I got done reading this and studying this, I was like, wow. So clear. This was a letter to the church in Thessalonica here. And this is what Paul had to say. Listen to this. Listen to this. It says, Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the traditions that you have received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we work night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. Verse 9. It was not because we did not, it was not because we did not have the right, but to give in ourselves as an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busybodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Notice verse 13. It says, As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in well-doing. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him, that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Brothers and sisters, we have a responsibility for each other on this level. You know, if we face a person like that, if we work with a person like that, according to this chapter that we read, we're supposed to help him overcome this. We're supposed to help him move on. When a person in the church refuses to work, they become an unnecessary burden in for the church and bring reproach upon the name of Christianity. How can a man care for his family if he refuses to work? How can a lazy person point people to God when they live as a lazy individual? They refuse to see that their lifestyle hinders their ability to point people to Christ. And I come to realize in reading this chapter here, it's as simple as people watching us work, how we work whether we're willing to literally get our hands dirty, whether we're willing to take the heavier part of the responsibility, when we're willing to do what it takes to make something happen, whether it's on a personal level, whether it's on a family level, or on a church level. <clears throat> so you may ask yourself, is this who I really am? I came across some self-check questions to ask yourself. <clears throat> Am I lazy or not? And these are some questions that I found interesting that I come across that were a help to me. Number one, do you sit back and long for things you won't work for? If that's the case, then you're a lazy person. Then I'm a lazy person. Number two, 
Do you desire for projects to succeed, but, but don't offer your help? Are you a student who wants good grades but won't study? And this can apply to us as adults as well. Are you the person who wants a better marriage but you won't put forth the effort to have it? Are you the employee who really wants things to be different but would rather talk about it than to work on solutions. If someone, particularly someone over you, asks you to do something, do you refuse? And if you do, why? If you say yes, do your actions reflect your best efforts or the bare minimum? <laughs> If you're asked to do something, do you only do what you absolutely have to, and that is it? And if that's the case, then you're lazy. <laughs> do you start, start something but quit when it's not easy and requires more effort? Do you push through to the end despite the challenges that come along the way? No matter what comes, you're going to finish it. Do you endure and work when you don't even feel like it? Do you go to work even though you don't feel like it? And if I literally don't go to work because I don't feel like it, then I got a problem. Then I have a problem. Do you give in to distractions at the expense of what matters most? How easy do distractions distract you from what you know you're supposed to be doing? This is a good one. Do you give your best effort even when you're not paid what you think you need to get paid for what you're doing? Do you choose to sleep over fulfilling your responsibilities? Do you need someone directly over you and a tight deadline to get things done? Are you a person that always needs somebody over you to make sure you get the job done? If that's you, you're lazy. Or if it's me. Last one I have here is do you create excuses always to ha and always have a justification for why you can't or don't get things done? Instead of just admitting it. There's always a reason, always a reason why things aren't getting done that need to be done. So if this is me, how can I overcome this sin of laziness? First thing is to admit it, right? Recognize it. Admit it. <clears throat> Second thing is go ask for help. Go to God and ask for help. Go to individuals that you have confidence in and ask for help. Go to the Word of God. Go to God in prayer. There's so many answers in here. So many answers that God has. We don't have to keep on living in the sin of laziness. And number three, realize that time is short and running out. I think Mike is the one that uh, mentioned it here in devotions. I think, uh, you know, we're living in the end times. Time is running out. You go to John ch chapter 9, and verse 4. It says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Behold, now is the accept accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 
So if we find this sin of laziness in our life, God says today is the salvation for you and me. Now we can be freed from it. We can change it. In Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14, it says, And do this, knowing the time that, that now it is high time to waken out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the work of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And that's exactly what a lazy person does, is fulfills his or her own lusts. That's what it's all about. That's the bottom line. And can we be real with it and ask God to forgive us and be able to live above it? God's heart is that we're useful in his kingdom. But if we're not willing to get up and get to work, God can't use us. I mean, Jesus gave the parable of the talents, right? He made it that practical. If I can't be responsible in the daily things of life and get done what I know needs to be done, then God is not going to be able to use me in his kingdom, in the spiritual side, in the church work. God can't because I'm not responsible. I haven't proved myself. And so I was encouraged with this this morning, you know, the... I don't have to stay in this state. God has better things for me. God wants me to live above it. And I can through the power of his resurrection. And there's hope. And I was in, and of course, my mind's running in a hundred directions, right? And so I'm thinking of myself and how we work as a family. And then I'm thinking on a church level, how we work together as a church. Uh, you know, all this plays out. We don't have to say a word. None of us. I don't have to say a word. I mean, that's just all fleshed out. And like was said this morning, and you can see if a peach tree is a peach tree. And so let's take this to heart. Let's help one another and encourage one another to get the work done. God bless you. Let's stand for prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, this morning we thank you again for your mercies. Thank you again for your forgiveness. Thank you again for your love. Oh God, I pray that you would help me to take your word to heart. Lord, I just pray that you work in my own heart. On this level, Lord, of laziness. Lord, it's, I'm guilty of it. Father, I pray that you would help us as fathers here to Take this responsibility to heart and show our family what it means to be free from the sin of laziness. Father, I thank you that we don't have to keep on this road, but there's forgiveness, there's repentance, and Lord, that through your spirit we can live victorious. Father, I just pray that you would help us understand when you said that to look into the harvest there's so much to do but there's so little people willing to help and work now, Father we want to step up to the plate this morning and be willing to use the view and to get the work done in your kingdom whatever that is, whatever you called us to for your glory Father I pray you bless Jeremy where he's at and bless him uh, there at the prison work bring him safely home Father, we just give the rest of the afternoon in your care. Thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity this week to get busy about what you've called us to do. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated.